In the ancient scriptures, a phrase echoes across the pages, whispered in the sacred words of the King James Version and its kin. Principalities and powers. These words echoes through the verses of the scriptures, casting shadows of mystery and menace to humans throughout history. But what do they mean? In simpler terms, they speak of something darker, something beyond our sight. They speak of rulers and authorities, forces that lurk in the shadows, unseen but ever active. Throughout the text of the Bible, it becomes clear that these words point to a cosmic battle, a clash between good and evil. They describe the vast army of malevolent spirits, minions of darkness who wage war against all that is good and true. In essence, they depict the agents of Satan himself, beings of unfathomable power who scheme and plot in the realms unseen. Their mission? To thwart the plans of God and bring chaos to his creation. So, when we speak of principalities and powers, we speak of a struggle as old as time itself, a battle fought not with swords and shields, but with faith and perseverance. And in this timeless conflict, we are called to stand firm, to resist the forces of darkness, and to cling to the light of hope. The story of principalities and powers unfolds further in the ancient writings, where we find a passage of triumph and assurance in the book of Romans. Here, amidst the words penned by the Apostle Paul, we glimpse a declaration of victory that resonates through the ages. In Romans 8 verses 37 to 39, Paul speaks with conviction, proclaiming that through the love of Christ, we are more than conquerors. He paints a picture of invincibility, declaring that neither the trials of life nor the terrors of death, either angels nor demons, nor any power in this world or beyond, can separate us from the boundless love of God. These words are a beacon of hope, a reassurance that no force, no matter how mighty, can sever the bond between us and our Creator. The powers mentioned here, whether they be false prophets or the dark entities that empower them, are powerless against the overwhelming love of God. The essence of this passage is not found in deciphering the identities of these powers, but rather in embracing the unshakable truth of God's saving grace. It serves as a reminder that victory is not just possible but assured, and that nothing can hinder the outpouring of divine love upon those who believe. In the ancient texts of Colossians, we unearth another reference to principalities and powers, shedding light on the divine order of creation. Here, the words penned by the Apostle Paul echo with a resounding truth that transcends time. In Colossians 1 verse 16, Paul unveils a profound revelation that all things, both seen and unseen, whether they be thrones, powers, rulers, or authorities, were brought into existence by the hand of God. This passage serves as a powerful declaration of God's sovereignty, affirming that He reigns supreme over every realm, whether in the heavens or on the earth. Even in the face of rebellion and defiance, God's control remains unwavering. Though evil forces may wield power in the shadows, they are ultimately subject to the divine will. In the grand tapestry of existence, even the wicked serve a purpose ordained by God, fulfilling His perfect plan and design. So, while principalities and powers may roam the realms of darkness, they do so under the watchful gaze of a sovereign God who orchestrates all things according to his wisdom and purpose. In this truth, we find assurance and hope, knowing that even in the midst of chaos, God's plan unfolds with unwavering precision. In the timeless pages of Colossians, a profound truth is unveiled, the ultimate triumph of Jesus Christ over all powers and authorities. Here, we discover a revelation that illuminates the depths of the Savior's victory. In Colossians 2 verse 15, we are told of a momentous event. Jesus, through his death on the cross, disarmed the powers and authorities, making a spectacle of them for all to see. This act of divine conquest was nothing short of a public declaration of triumph, as Jesus emerged victorious over the forces of darkness. But how did he achieve such a feat? It was through the cross, the instrument of his sacrifice, that Jesus reclaimed dominion from the powers that sought to enslave humanity. By his death, he shattered the chains of captivity and liberated those held captive by the evil reign of Satan and his legions. Moreover, in Colossians 2 verse 14, we find that Jesus not only bore the weight of our sins on the cross but also obliterated the accusations of the powers against us. The record of our wrongdoings, which Satan uses to accuse us before God, 
was nailed with Christ to the cross, forever destroyed. In the eyes of God, we are declared innocent, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Thus, the powers are disarmed, stripped of their ability to condemn us. Through the cross, Jesus not only secured our salvation but also dealt a decisive blow to the forces of darkness, ensuring their defeat for all eternity. In the Epistle to the Ephesians, we uncover another facet of the mystery surrounding principalities and powers, this time in the heavenly realms. Here, the Apostle Paul unveils a divine purpose that transcends the bounds of human understanding. In Ephesians 3 verses 10 to 11, we glimpse into the unfolding drama of redemption, where God's wisdom is made manifest through the church. Through the intricate tapestry of salvation, the angelic hosts bear witness to the manifold wisdom of God, revealed in the plan accomplished through Christ Jesus. This passage offers a glimpse into a celestial audience, where angels, both celestial and fallen, behold the glory of God shining forth in the redeemed community. Through the church, those who have been saved and preserved by the power of Christ, the eternal purpose of God is made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. In Ephesians 1 verses 20 to 21, we are reminded of the exalted position of Christ, who reigns supreme over all creation, far above any principality or power. In the grand theater of redemption, the church becomes a testament to the preeminence of Christ, a living testimony to the wisdom and power of God. Thus, in the heavenly realms, the unfolding drama of redemption serves as a revelation to the angelic hosts, a proclamation of the glory of God and the supremacy of Christ. Through the church, God's eternal purpose is fulfilled, and his wisdom is made known to all creatures, both seen and unseen. In the pages of Ephesians, a clarion call resounds, urging us to recognize the ongoing battle we face in our lives. Ephesians 6 verse 12 paints a vivid picture of this struggle, depicting a warfare waged against the rulers, authorities, and powers of darkness, as well as the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. But amidst this conflict, there is a glimmer of hope, a promise of victory that echoes throughout the scriptures. Romans 8 assures us that through Christ, we are more than conquerors, and nothing can separate us from the love of God. It's as if we stand on the battlefield, facing an army of dark powers stripped of their true strength, for they have been disarmed by the cross. Victory is assured, and our task is to live out this truth in our daily lives. We do this by demonstrating and depending upon the wisdom and power of God. By trusting in His victory, we can overcome every obstacle and triumph over every adversary. In the face of darkness, we stand firm in the light of God's love, knowing that He has already won the ultimate victory for us. So, let us take up the armor of God, gird ourselves with faith, and press forward in the battle, confident in the promise of triumph that is ours in Christ. In the letter to Titus, a final mention of principalities and powers sheds light on a different aspect of their significance. Here, they are not depicted as malevolent forces but as earthly authorities appointed by God for our protection and welfare. In Titus 3 verse 1, we are reminded of the importance of submitting to these governmental authorities recognizing them as representatives of God on earth. Submission to them is not just a matter of societal order, but also a reflection of our submission to God himself. This principle is echoed in Romans 13 verse 2, where rebellion against earthly authorities is equated with rebellion against God's divine order. Those who resist these authorities not only defy human laws but also invite judgment upon themselves. Therefore, in our interactions with earthly authorities, whether they be rulers, leaders, or officials, it is essential to remember their role as instruments of God's will. By honoring and obeying them, we demonstrate our reverence for God's authority and contribute to the peace and welfare of society. Thank you for your support.